Yes, in the new guidelines we are featuring six major bullet points that are distinguished from the previous version. Number one it pertains to screening, particularly screening in patients where we believe atrial fibrillation is undetected. Number two pertains to the symptomatology. We have the error score with the class 2A and 2B, where 2B is um, giving certain level of symptoms to the patient and that has a big implication for choosing rhythm control therapy. The third is the manifestation of cardioversion and of rhythm control therapy in the guideline. Number four, the entire issue of patient enrollment and certain people are surprised to read that but decision making together with the patient is viewed as an important uh, um, approach anticoagulation area where we have modified a little bit the one group that is women with one additional Chadsvas risk factor. Of course Chadsvas remains as the instrument of, of uh, stroke uh, risk estimation. These women with one additional risk factor are now a little bit downgraded to a recommendation of 2A instead of 1. And the last is bleeding risk where we have removed the Hasblad score. You're having a very good point. We have for a long time had a gold standard of unprotected cardioversion that was the 48 hour time window. Now there are some retrospective data that may point to the fact that it is safer to narrow the window down, let's say to less than 12 or 24 hours. But these, these, um, these findings are not strong enough to change our uh, old recommendation. So we, we, we wrote that down in a known chapter called Gap of Evidence and we, we need more research on that. We have a very strong recommendation to use amiodarone because basically it's the only drug that we have amongst all the antiarrhythmic drugs that even can be given in patients who have a severe structural heart disease. So in that sense the recommendation is maintained. Actually no, I think the rhythm control therapy also in the wake of, of ablation has been strengthened and with this comes the necessity to schedule elective or acute cardioversions. We have taken note of this important paper. It is referenced in the guideline. It was done in 100 patients and in this sense the entire evidence base is more or less um, the same as before except that we have good data that show that vernacolant is very efficient but it hasn't really influenced the overall standing of the recommendations. It's a very uh, important point for clinical practice which I, I think many have asked when they read the guideline that came out in 2012. In this new version we have a little bit better defined what is meant between moderate and severe but there is no strict answer so much of this is based on expert opinion. You may say uh, LV hypertrophy of 14 millimeters might be regarded as um, and above might be regarded as a moderate structural heart disease etc.